Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Hair Talks with Dr. Ben and Dr. Sean Benham. I'm Dr. Ben, board certified dermatologist. I'm Dr. Sean Benham, board certified hair transplant specialist. Uh, today we're both wearing black, so hopefully you guys won't get us confused. And if this is the first time you're joining us, please subscribe for more information about hair loss, hair loss treatment, and prevention. So, today's talk is going to be on Avodart, which is the test drive. That's right. So, uh, so Dr. explain, what, what is Avidar, right, with Finasteride, and how is it different from Finasteride? Okay, so, so first of all, Finasteride has been in the U.S. market for many, many, many years, actually. Uh, and Propecia, which is Finasteride 1 milligram, is an FDA approved for hair loss. Uh, it's mainly a 5 alpha reductase 2 inhibitor, uh, and it inhibits 5 alpha reductase about 85% of the time. And a very small 5 alpha reductase 1 inhibitor. Um, to test so try. So, there are two receptors, right? So, there's a 5, five alpha reductase 1 and 2, right? Yes, exactly. So, finasteride basically attacks and uh, attaches to mainly one of them. Yes, exactly. And that's 5 alpha reductase 2. And it inhibits the band in 85% of the time. And that receptor is important because it's what's responsible for turning testosterone is dihydrotestosterone known as DHT and it's DHT that causes the hair loss. So by preventing that receptor you inhibit the conversion over and as a result basically you're going to prevent uh, the formation of DHT and ultimately prevent hair loss. I see. Okay. So that dutestride uh, is, n is another drug that was originally introduced in the US basically for prostate issues just like finasteride. Uh, but dutestride is not FDA approved for hair loss. Uh, it also blocks 5 alpha reductase 1 and 5 alpha reductase 2. So both of them. But, uh, both of them, but it does it a little bit differently than finasteride. See, the dutasteride uh, blocks 5 alpha reductase 2 about 98-99%, whereas finasteride is blocking the 5 alpha reductase 2 in about 85%. So it's better at blocking the 5 alpha reductase 2. I see. Also, with respect to 5 alpha reductase 1, uh, the test drive blocks about 50%, whereas finesse drive blocks about 1%. So it's a much better uh, inhibitor of the 5 alpha reductase 1. I so, in general, the test drive is a better inhibitor of 5 alpha reductase 2 and 5 alpha reductase 1. I see. So, with that being said, I mean, it sounds like hey, you know, if you're a better inhibitor, you're gonna have better results. Why aren't most doctors, when you go into a derm office or you know a hair consultation office, why aren't they prescribing the Avodar as first line choice? That's the question. Well, you know the problem with the Avodar, right, as compared to the Finasteride, is the half life. Half -life. The half life. The half life means the amount of time it takes for half of the drug to leave your system, right? For you know, and typically, right? So you doc, you reduce it by fifty percent. So one half life you reduce it by fifty percent. Another half life you reduce it by additional fifty percent. So you still some in your body, and it typically takes about five half lives for it to almost leave your body. So finasteride has a half life of about six hours. Six hours. So in thirty system. hours, yes. right? It's almost out of your system. Pretty much, yes. Right? That's why you have to take it every day. Exactly. The test drive has a half of about five weeks. So it takes 30 weeks almost to leave your system. It's true. Really? Yes. So if you have a side effect with finasteride, you know it's gonna be out of the system within a day. However, if you have side effect with finasteride, it's gonna be hanging in there for a long time. Right. That is correct. So this is the reason then why we don't recommend uh, this patient's taking Avodar at the beginning is not the first drug of choice. This is the fact of the longer half-life equals longer side effects if you want to have it. So what is it that you prescribe with Avodar? So okay, that's a very important question. So first of all, somebody comes in, again, as I said, Avodar is not your first time drug. Because number one, it's not FDA proof uh, for hair loss. And number two, it has a longer half-life. So you first want to basically make sure that you go through your other options before you basically go to Avodar. So you want to make sure the patient has tried or finasteride, 
Tropical Finesse Tribe, Minoxidil, Protein Shakes, Collagen. So you really want to basically make sure that you take advantage of all the stuff that you currently have that are kind of FDA approved or very commonly used. I have uh, the patients that I typically put on Avodart are the ones who have taken Finastride for like 5, 10, 15 years and they kind of say, hey doc, now I've noticed that I've gotten used to it and it's not working as good anymore. Uh, or, you know, a patient you know, who tries Finastride for a while, at least a year or two, and says, doc, it just doesn't work. So it's for a patient that just actually doesn't work or they've been on it for many, many years and now they're plateauing. Those are really the two categories of patients, basically, that I would even consider doing for Avodar. And also, uh, after patients that have no side effects. I would not place any patient on Avodar who has had side effects on finasteride. But if you did finasteride for a while, and you kind of plateaued on it, and you don't have any side effects, then I would basically, that's a good candidate uh, for a patient to go on Avodar. And I definitely do explain that it is not FDA approved. And also the fact that they had a longer half-life and if you do get the side effects, it could last longer and it has a hard chance of being permanent and lasting longer than if you had no side effects on Finastra. So now there are many different ways that you can also transfer patients from Finastra to Avodart. I mean, you know, I do have some patients that take Finastra five times a week and Avodart twice a week. And you know, I don't think there's really any studies, you know, uh, that could say if that's better or not than taking Finastrat every day or Avodot every day. But some patients do tell me, you know, that doing that regimen, under, either on their own by another physician or by us, that it works better for them. You know, again, everybody's different, you know, uh, and everybody does things differently. But when I, sometimes when I do want to switch patients from Finastrat to Avodot, I do titrate the Avodot part. So, you know, if you're taking uh, Finastrat seven, seven days a week, I sometimes tell them, look, take a six days a week and insert one day of Avodart. And in two weeks, go from one day of Avodart to two days a week of Avodart. So you slowly cut down the finasteride, slowly up your Avodart, uh, so you don't, you're not starting one thing for turkey and starting something new. Now, on the percentage of patients that have on finasteride and abitasteride, what percentage are on abitasteride? Uh, probably 1%. 1%, that's very Now. Do you see much sexual side effects with Avodar? Interestingly, I have not really seen any side effects with Avodar. Now, amazingly, right? Now, I know, you know, it's a smaller patient population that we're having, but I actually, I haven't had any patient that complained of sexual side effects on Avodar. Yeah, but, but I think there, there are a couple of reasons for that. Number one, I think we're screening all those patients that go on Avodar. You're not randomly putting any patient on it. True. You're only putting the patients that have been on Finastra for 10 to 15 years uh, and have had no side effects. Yeah, on you're, definitely you're definitely filtering out all people that have, may have had side effects. Yes. And I think by the time you put people on, on Finastra, you're a bit older and you know, it's not sure that side effects are less anyways the older population with their father after you got That is correct. That is correct. Well, thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions, you know, you can always leave them below and also subscribe to, you know, follow us on more topics about hair loss, hair loss prevention, actually. Thank you so much.